Okay, so hello everyone. Yeah. Uh, welcome to a new live webinar hosted by the Huawei Support Community. As you can see, today we are going to discuss about DevOps. Um, this is part of a series of webinars we are going to have. Um, this is session one. Uh, for those of you interested in um, this, um, we will announce the following webinars soon. Um, our host today is Bashir Ahmed Zishan. He's been a webinar host in the community before as well. Um, we haven't had the webinar in a while, but I'm glad to um, work together again, <laughs> finally. <laughs> so uh, welcome again, Bashir. Thank you. Thank you. Nice to have you again here as the webinar host. Thank you. It's thank you again. Thank We've you been again missing you. Yes. <laughs> uh, it's been a long time because I was busy in some other I know. and tasks. So first of all, apologies from my side. No and, need. <laughs> uh, I hope it will be uh, it will be again a journey of webinars because it's a series as yes. Miss Alina has mentioned. Uh, maybe it's a three or four. The three are decided and will be extending if you people are interested and we are good to go with the track. Mm -hmm. So I'll be starting in a minute. I think it's a good time to start. Yes, yes, already, yes. Uh, let's start because it's six. already a bit late. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's great. That's great. So everybody, um, good morning, good afternoon, and uh, good night according to your time zone. This is Bashir Ahmed uh, uh, and uh, today we are having a series of uh, uh, webinars. The first part is all about DevOps. What we are going to have in these sessions and how these sessions will be conducted, this is something which we need to discuss in the start, and then we'll be moving toward the uh, today's uh, topic and then we'll be deep diving into the DevOps world. So just, uh, just uh, okay. So just to um, start with the series, like as the name suggests you in a great way that going cloud native with DevOps and Kubernetes. So we were having like two or three topics which are somehow interrelated to each other. And the first part which is uh, going to be uh, discussed today is all about DevOps because DevOps is the, uh, the first building block for the cloud native world. What is cloud native, how it is connected and all, all that stuff related to these topics will be discussed. Don't worry about that. So uh, we'll be discussing start uh, in the start. What are the our roadmap? So let me take to the to you to the journey of uh, cloud native. So these are some milestones which we will be uh, covering. First of all, secondly, uh, we'll be discussing uh, we will be discussing uh, Kubernetes. Definitely, a, they're a great uh, tool uh, for the world of microservices and containerization. And then we'll be uh, shifting toward the Huawei Cloud and some enterprise solutions. Definitely, we'll be discussing some DevOps tools of Huawei in today's session as well. And then in the third path, we'll be more focusing on the application layer and application aspects, or maybe we are developing some industry-based applications. And uh, and in the fourth or later stages, maybe we will extend our uh, webinar to other level. But these three uh, milestones should be covered uh, within this year, inshallah. So starting with the DevOps, whatever comes in your mind, what is DevOps? You just write on, on a chat box, just a single liner. I would not be requiring any definition from the Google or from your great chat GPT. I just want you a single definition which comes in your mind, whatever feels like to you. Maybe you are uh, making DevOps understand to a sixth grade student. So maybe you are not using any technical jargons. Uh, just a single line with uh, few words or few uh, concepts that would be fine for me so i'll be it will be helping me to understand what is your understanding for the devops tool but definitely uh, to those who don't know about devops and kubernetes so we are here to assist you so start with this session what we are uh, looking these are three topics which will be are discussing starting with devops and cloud native what are these why we are using it and what are DevOps tool for Huawei Cloud? And then definitely we are having a live Q&A session and uh, a quiz and definitely a good rewards from Huawei Enterprise Support Community. So, so these are, you can say, included 
in our menu for this webinar. So most of you who are aware about this webinar, they know we are having a like one and a half hour session in which one hour we will be discussing the concepts and the lab. And then we, in the end, we will be having question and answer session. Maybe you can ask a question in the comment box during the session and I'll be trying to answer during the session as well. Otherwise, I'll be giving the answers in the end or maybe after the webinar, don't worry about that. And maybe you can ask question on the forum as well. So we have plenty of options. So start before starting to the session, to those who are new to me, do they don't know me? So there's a quick introduction about myself. Um, for me, I, I am a professional in IP cloud world, but for me, uh, for me, uh, I'm more like a trainer or a teacher because I, I would like to share my knowledge to everyone because when you teach someone you will learn twice if I'm teaching someone so I'm learning as well so this is quick introduction about myself if you are connected to me on LinkedIn or on the forum you can find me even you can find me by searching Bashir Amazishan on Google uh, so you can find me uh, there as well so I'm your teacher I'm, I'm a, and as well as I'm a learner as well so here are some certification from uh, which we are recently I have like AWS Kubernetes certification and Huawei and other vendors as well. So right now, uh, Zubair and Umair Rahman, Ms. Veda, Half Engineer, Hura Bas, everyone has shared a great input. I would really thankful to you. Somebody has given it's an automation tool. Somebody said it's a general term used for system to facilitate communication. Somebody write like the ability to build the application with the same kind of automation and real-time response that's a DevOps. that's thank you Venkita. very good response and Zubair a client or a VMware for faster software okay that's fine too and somehow DevOps is the general name of process operation and the quality this is only man I'm sorry if I pronounce wrong but that's thank you for you for input so that is something we have for the DevOps so before DevOps, we will be thinking something about cloud native. Cloud, you know about the cloud. This is all about sharing of resources and everything. And I'm not going to detail about cloud and cloud native because we had uh, sessions earlier um, in 2021. So I'll be sharing the links in, in the end as well. So if anybody wants to get the knowledge of cloud native, what is cloud, what is IPv6 and everything, every link will be shared. I'll be sharing in the comment as well. Uh, in the post of my webinar. So you can have a look over there as well. So the, what is cloud native? This is the concept right now we are discussing and how cloud native is helping us. Uh, this is what we are discussing in next two to three minutes. First of all, some there are some solution which are made in normal world and then move to the cloud. And there are some solutions which are made in cloud and work in cloud and they are for the cloud. In simple word, I'm just not taking any technical jargons. I'm not going to take any difficult words. I'm just making it very simple. So all of us can understand in a better way. Definitely I'll be sharing the technical uh, examples and technical jargons as well. But in the start, I'll be, be very simple. The solutions, the application, the web apps, which are made in cloud, for the cloud, by the clouders, or it's called cloud native. For example, if, if I say I made this application for the cloud and it is working in a cloud and definitely people of the cloud is using it. Uh, there are some parameters, some KPIs which that application should follow. Otherwise, that is not cloud native. That's fine. So, uh, let me show you one um, table and then we'll discuss. Uh, uh, so, it will help us to understand the cloud native world. Let me go to this, yes. This is, you can see a one window uh, view of all the application and package deployment and infrastructure. Initially, we have a, a win giant uh, architecture on physical servers in our data centers, and we are using different waterfall technologies. But after time proceeds, we go into the uh, smaller chunks, like we divided our whole architecture into smaller chunks, uh, like in the layers that is called one tier, two tier, three tiers in a VMsware world with the hosted servers. But after uh, 20, uh, 2010, we 
invented DevOps technologies where every application is divided into a smaller part. For those who don't know about microservices, it's something like your whole website is divided into a smaller chunk of pieces. The more granular it is, the more a smaller part it is, it is easy to maintain. It is easy to operate and definitely these microservices will work on containers. They will not be working on VMs and something. They will be working in containers and containers are hosted in a cloud. So this is the beginning of the cloud native world. But what are three or four basic parts which is required for any cloud technology, cloud native technology is that is what we are discussing. So these are very, you can say, initially the stages we started our journey. So now you have a good idea about cloud native, the technology which is used to build and run a scalable application in modern dynamic environments such as public and private cloud. Up now, if I say uh, I have a website and uh, I have a, a application which is uh, for my customers and they are hosted in my uh, data center. Uh, definitely it is depending upon the connectivity if people around the world is are able to connect they can easily use my application but it's a giant one application and if any one part is crashed my whole application will be crashed so now i start, I start uh, thinking about the solution we sit with some solution architect with some consultant and they they decided and they suggested us to go to the cloud native world so we asked them what are the three requirements or four requirements we should uh, be having or you can say what are the four technologies we should be focusing on so we will get uh, uh, into the cloud native world easily so my consultant give me this picture if you want to be a cloud native application you need devops you need containerization or containers you need microservices and you need the knowledge of ci cd so that's why uh, the first part is DevOps. So we'll be focusing on DevOps part today, but definitely because it's the first part of a webinar, I'll be discussing containers, microservices, containers, and CI CD a bit briefly. But if you want to know more about containers and microservices, I'll be sharing the links as well. Some of our, of our my articles on Huawei Enterprise Support Committee, some are the links of the webinar which I conducted uh, in last last one year or maybe uh, year or so so you will be having the knowledge of everything so if i compromise the cloud native in an easy bit easy word cloud native is, is the way we are changing our applications and our system in a new world because everything is going to be a cloud especially after the covid or pandemic because uh, i know one time when most of the companies they bother to move to the cloud they most they more rely on their uh, you can say uh, private domain or their uh, you can say um, on-premises system but after cloud they had to move because there is no way out uh, to go out and go to the office and maintain every server so there is a huge uh, influx of cloudification so mostly like the best example is this software which is the one of the great example for the cloudification so like last uh, two or three years there is a great increase in the cloudification so the the, the applications of the companies are using should be cloud native because it should be built for the cloud and it should work seamlessly for the cloud for example if somebody asks me that why we will need a cloud native when we have a very good application which is running on our on-prem system and we are very good to, good to use it but the application which is built in cloud works more better uh, then the application which is not built in a cloud. For example, um, I make an application on my Linux machine and I run on the same flavor of the Linux. It will work very fine. But if I converted it, uh, this application into some other form and start using in Windows or maybe other flavor of Linux, there, is, there might be a huge chance that it will lose some functionalities. For example, if you if you save a file in your Excel and and you just upload on a Google Drive, then they all always give you a pop up that some functionality will not work because that was saved according to uh, Microsoft Office. It was not according to your Google uh, Google Sheets or Google Docs. 
so that was a quick example from our daily life so we we know about cloud native we know what are the uh, building blocks for the cloud natives and definitely we'll discussing each of them in a quick bit session and uh, we'll see ki bhai what is microservices what is containerization what is ci cd and then a great discussion on devops so this is the area which is uh, being focused today be it devops microservices container and definitely cloud is already used but we'll be covering ci cd part so um, let me welcome you again on the topics again so component uh as i mentioned these are four major component there are three more i'll be sharing the links as well but these are the more focused topics which is uh, required or which are inevitable or which are in essential for your cloud native journey be it container microservices be it devops or the ci cd is something to help you out but before going on each one of them i want anyone to read uh this four lines and then we'll continue maybe you can read by yourself don't don't need to um read aloud the cloud native application development is one of the fastest growing trend in in the tech world today both gartner there are two agencies gartner and idc forecast that 995% of application will be cloud native by 2025 that is it's been like uh around 2 years or maybe some less so are you ready to take this journey on because every application should be uh, cloud native by 2025 and these two um, organizations or giants are uh, are very much uh, active and they are very respected one so if they are claiming something definitely we should respect that opinion so we are ready that's why we are here first of all containers up the container is the word which is extensively being used in our tech world nowadays but all the words all the jargons normally comes from the common life for example cloud is the best example container is the one which is used to carry goods from one country to other country but definitely we are not talking about that thing we are talking about something which is used in the cloud world so a uh, container is a package a small package which uh, is need to uh, which is used to transport some goods or something but in the cloud world or in the uh, you can say tech world containers are like small computing units which is used to perform uh, to use to perform certain task for example i used to have a server where i install multiple application then what i did uh, in the previous year what i did i'll shift my traditional servers into the vm world that is called virtual machine somebody gave me the example that vm where and something like that somebody has shared their response in a chat um, few minutes ago so we had some advantages of vm world but vm has some disadvantages like if you need to change any make any change in one vm then all other will be impacted so we started moving toward the containerization world where you have a base operating system and then there is a software which is called container runtime maybe a docker or some other and then we have multiple container for example if i have one laptop normal laptop not very high spec i can have hundreds of container running on that system because this is very small unit you can think like as if the container is a small computing resource just just to give you a very you can say layman i would not say a layman word but i would say a general term so it's a easy computing resource which has some cpu some ram some storage and everything and in that resource or in that container you can install one application for example i have one laptop and i have three vms i'll i'll deploy one web server in one container i can deploy one email server into other and the last one will be used as my sql server or any database server so i can have the separation and i can have the dynamic allocation because in the vms we don't have the dynamic allocation of resources we can have a static ones but in the container world we have the dynamic allocation and there are thousand other features which can container can lead us to and i'll be sharing the links in the end as i mentioned you earlier as well so container is something which which i have the idea now now what should be the second part can just anyone recall in a like a flash just a message would be easy for me
Okay. If anyone has issue, let me know. So I'll try to speak much uh, louder. Okay. Can anyone just confirm me? So I'll be a bit louder. Now we can hear you. That's great. Okay. That's great. Okay. So we we had a good idea about the containerization. So can you just confirm me what would be the second part? uh which uh, we just had discussion so uh, i can i can know what is the second part the first one was the container just a message on a chat maybe you can send to me or send to all whatever feels good to you anyone just quick quick answer after container what should be the second part come on hurry up No one container microservices DevOps. There are thousand of th four basic part. Yes, definitely. Thank you, Hur. So uh, after container, we can have microservices, as I showed you in the initial pictures. The second part would be the microservices. Uh, initially, what we have like initially means like 20, 10, 20 years ago, like our applications, our websites are built as if they are one unit. For example, it's a one company. Now we have divided our country into separate entities. Like you can say one is A part, B part, C part, D part. And in A part, there are multiple subdomains. For example, uh, for example, we have company ABC. It's uh, one of the uh, world largest telecom communication. So they divided their telecom business, their network business, their enterprise business into three, three uh, but a smaller parts and then each part has several parts so it, because it will be easy for one guy to uh, maintain and supervise that initially there is one CEO looking after everything now every sister company has one CEO and every CEO has multiple teams under it so same concept for the microservices in the tech world where one application application could be a web application could be a mobile application could be a website or anything you can say Application is divided into thousands of small pieces that is called microservices. Uh, services are divided into a micro pieces. So that would be very easy to maintain and definitely they are very adaptable to each other. If one part is fails, no application will be destroyed. For example, I'll give you one simple example. Let's say we have a login page of Web Enterprise Support Community. You will see one page uh, just, but before behind that there are Hundred and thousand of containers are being. For example, a login bar is working in one container. Forget option is working on other container. Front end is working uh, some other containers, and there are thousands of containers for the database. So for you, it's a one web page, but behind that, there are journey of hundreds of containers. So we are divided this uh, giant page into a small pieces of microservices. Okay. So, uh, as I sh uh, told you that we'll be discussing quickly about these three uh, containers, microservices and CI/CD, and definitely a detailed one on the DevOps. But uh, every else thing like about microservices or containers, I'll be sharing links in the end, so you can have the details. But just to uh, quickly give you an answer, almost every application can be converted uh, into microservices depending upon their architecture. Mostly applications. Uh, in the traditional worlds are uh, monolith like they are one giant architecture so they cannot be converted or they are not supposed to convert it i i should say the rather the right word so most of the uh, the time uh, companies are thinking to migrate from monolith to microservices to get the better advantage out of it but sometimes they have uh, like dependence i'll give you one one simple example in a quick uh, manner like the banking application we they still used to have a one black monitor and uh, and they are using that screen or the airline ones like uh, you can say in PI office they have one black screen and they are just typing so these are some giant application they can work together they, don't, they cannot be into the microservices or maybe they are not tend to move that so back to again the microservices uh, microservices is something which is uh, we discussed right now. Okay, so 
if we say before microservices we we had tier ps system like for example front tier back end tier and the middle tier or normally which we used to call it three tier three tier applications one tier is for the user one tier is for the database and the last tier is for storing data and everything which is normally called as a back end tier but after moving toward the microservices which is nothing but a smaller part of your giant application a small automated part so every part will be connected together and definitely these microservices will be very much backed by the containers and then containers are created by docker and these containers like thousand and millions of containers are being managed by some orchestration system that is uh, could be the kubernetes and docker swarm or something like that that is the topic of our second uh, webinar so right now we had knowledge of uh, container and the microservices now the third part or you can say third building block for our cloud native world would be ci cd actually it's not a part i would rather say let me correct myself it's it's a tool it's a supporting part for example i am working on an application and uh, i'm using um, for example python code so i would be using the python interpreter and software and help and there are some tools which are used for their support for example slack zoom and every other software they are not directly connected with the application but they are very much important for my daily use so ci cd is the concept which is being extensively used in our cloud native world cloud world and the it world in the software world continuous integration and continuous deployment because cloud native applications or the world of technology is all about change because the world is always changing but in the tech world or in the software world changes are uh, very abrupt very much you can say um, like every time there is there is changing are being made if i can give you some example if if uh, my memory serves me right that uh, netflix is doing changes 600 600 6000 times per day so um, and uh, same for the google google is running like 2 billion containers so it's been they are changing they are adopting um, multiple options so <clears throat> so the changes are so much there netflix is uh, making 600 changes per day same goes for the uber like around 1000 changes in production in a day we chat we chat the famous application in china they are doing like three times uber in a day so you can see how much changes they are making so these changes should be very much continuous there shouldn't be any downtime or any glitch or something so they have redundant path and everything available but the process should be continuous because continuously integrating and deployment there should not be any um, disturbance to the user or the end customers to feel any glitch or something like this so this ci cd phenomena is more if i discuss is like uh, you can say the adoptability or you can say the concept like uh, i'm continuously changing and i'm ch i'm implementing these changes to my production network because we'll make any change first we will implement in our uat our testing environment or in a qa the quality assurance department and then we'll be implementing these changes to the production so if they have given the go ahead then these changes will be uh, implemented in the production but the one basic thing which always comes in our mind that should be very fast that should be very accurate and that should be very flexible that should not be done by any human guy to check okay let's see do this no this all should be uh, done automatically one by one like let's say uh, for example i'll give you a very common life example uh with related with this webinar for example ms alina has shared you a link you just click on it they have asked you some process and then you just log in into the webinar what if this process could be automatic like that whenever you click it it will uh, take a uh, name from your computer host name or something and then maybe a thumb impression will will uh, used for authentication and then you will let into your web conferencing so this process will be more seamless and uh, uh, the experience will be enhanced definitely so ci cd is again i would say it's a long process just to automate things and just to get better output out of uh, our working and it is 
always uh, continuous. It's, it's, it's for complete life cycle. For example, if I see, give an example of a human, they, was, they were born and they were just raised, they got education, then they got married, and then they do their job, and then they die. That's life cycle will be end, and then new generation will come. But software world, the IT world, they keeps on going. So when we'll discuss the DevOps, you will see one infinity or something DevOps cycle, which normally we used to recall. I'll be showing that thing as well. The process will always be learning. For example, I give you an example of uh, Zoom software. Initially, when the pandemic hits, everybody started using Zoom. There are very, uh, you can say, minimum features are there. But after some time, they started adding the features because development work, testing work, and everything is always been there. So <clears throat> the process of learning is always there. For example, if I say one of my teacher is always used to say, a good teacher is one who is a good learner. Because when he teaches someone, he started learning from the, their students, their teachers, and everyone. So how, uh, the more he learns, the more he can teach to other guys. So the process of learning should never stop. You should learn, then unlearn, and then relearn. Because every time we learn something and then implement it and then get the feedback from our companion, our teachers, and our partners, and then start learning other new things and more in guys. So CICD is the phenomena which is <clears throat> extensively used in the IT cloud world and software worlds. So we we have a focus. The last part, which is the most important one, and definitely the, the one which we will be more interested in because this is the our main topic of our attention today the webinar uh, the series of webinar the first part is devops so as in the start i ask everyone to share their input what is devops so i would like to say thank you to the people who uh, contributed uh, maybe i can remember them few, few names like zubair hor and uh, half engineer akhil and other people are as well uh, Mr. Nita, I, I don't remember the name, sorry. So, uh, they have shared their response. That's very good. Thumbs up to you guys. So, DevOps. So, uh, everybody has shared their input from their perspective, and some of them were accurate, some have them were focused only the one part. But let me uh, tell you a very quick diagram, and then we'll discuss. DevOps is all about getting everyone in the organization, especially development guys and IT operations to pull in the same direction. Because they were moving into different directions, they, that's why the goal is not achieved. So pulling them in the one direction or one path, so you can get the one goal. This is the motive. Hello? I'm yeah, the sound was not clear. I think when you are moving, the sound is not always that clear. Maybe try to <laughs> not move that much. I'm not sure. But I'm sure it's from your headphones. So next time you are you have to change them, okay? Okay, I'll try not to move. Because sometime, um, yeah. the session, I may be... I know, I know. Okay, I'll try. But I, I okay. there's something about them. I, I'm not sure. Maybe they are disconnecting and... We cannot hear you okay, always just, that Just clearly. confirm me. Okay, I, I'll try to be stand still and uh, mm -hmm. living the same thing. Yeah, now I so think it's okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, because, because I can see on other monitor as well, the voice intensity. So that's why I ask you that, hey, is it well, uh, audible? Okay, so but DevOps is all about pulling everyone on the same page. So we can have uh, the ultimate goal achieved. So what does that mean? Because everybody has their different jobs to follow. Why everybody should come on the same um, page? But the collective goal should be same. For example, there are a team of coders. There are some team of testers. There are some people from the operations department. There are some guys. They are working for deployments. And normally what happens in IT world or in the software world, the people from development, they don't bother what is going on in the operations. So does the people from the operation. They don't want to look into the development part. And there's a wall of, uh, wall of barrier of, you can say bone of contention between them because they are from the other territories. So pulling that wall up aside is, is all about DevOps. The word is development and the operation. So mix, if you can 
uh, pick three uh, letters from development and three letters from the operations so you will get the word devops basically it's a phenomena uh, which was uh, emerged in the late 90s uh, that the people uh, the, there was a person who was working in, um, in a project as a consultant and he had difficulties like we are having nowadays the people from development are not concerning about the operational issues and so does the people from the operation they don't want to look the development changes so he took both of both teams to a table and then discuss that we are discussing and now we'll be working together to get more better output so this is the uh, you can say initial uh, concepts of devops and then this technology or this phenomena was adopted in software world the it world and let me tell you that this devops phenomena is now extensively being used in telecom as well and maybe it will be used in other fields as well it is same like the phenomena or theory or concept like the agile or if you know about the pmp something so that the methodologies can be used anywhere but definitely according to any um, field like medical profession and telecom profession everyone has different concerns but the major concern of collaborating with the teams is there so devops is there to stay so if i move further with the devops what are the parts and the loop which i was referring earlier that it's a life cycle for example um i'll try to explain all these six seven eight parts with a common life uh, for example i build an application that's a simple application uh, whenever you just click you will give your uh, input and it will uh, tell you your learning um, roadmap according to your exper experiences according to your you can say needs and everything you just go there and you type your input your linkedin profile your experiences and everything but after some time when people complain whenever i uh, make any edit they will not be updated so i said to my coder like please check this issue and uh, they start planning uh, the change and they do some coding then they uh, implement that code and then deploy it and then they start using the application so the customer were happy that's very good here now i can add it my profile as well but another issue comes in the issue was resolved and there is a bug arises then they fix the bug so this process is always continuing and then after some time uh, one of my client or customer asked me that we can have a video input as well so i integrated a video uh, based solution as well and these videos can be uh, uploaded from youtube so i had one integration with youtube as well that uh, uh, api should be there and then i can give a one youtube link and then the video will be uh, fetched from there you don't need to upload or you don't need to record uh, during uh, during the interview session and then we have some other features like you can have one on one session with your mentor and then this is one just one idea that comes to my mind right now so this is the life cycle of an application and that it will completely go on and when uh, then we have an uh, anniversary comes in of this application and then we uh, give a promotion like now if anybody sign up today he will get 50% discount so there are like hundred of people are coming so my application start degrading because the resources which was allocated for that is uh, certain amount so i need to have the backup plan as well so this development part and the operation part will not be done once twice or thrice it will be done hundreds of times and maybe the frequency could be changed according to the application like uh, the website from e-commerce store websites of news channel they are updated uh, in a minute basis or sometimes they are updating even in even seconds but some websites like blog website or some other website they are updated once in a week once in a month or once in a year so depending upon your need and your application the changes are there but the changes are always there and these eight phases are extensively used sometimes we put more focus on code planning phase is minimum deployment phase is bit longer operation phase is much more longer but on the other case the case is vice versa but all that phases are will be used extensively so devops is all about the life cycle of an application up now uh, 
I mentioned the earlier that DevOps is also being used in other part of uh, technologies like telecom and other fields. So if you take this picture in your mind and comes to the telecom world where you need to deploy some sites and then provide customer with some services and then customer feedbacks and everything. So the process would be same. Maybe the jargons, maybe uh, the action items would be different, but the stages or the phases of the life cycle of the project will be same. We, we, we will be having uh, a good time in planning, then we will having a deployment phase, then operation is there always. And uh, while operation, we will be having a monitoring phase and testing and building. Maybe the word coding should not be there, should be configuring or maybe uh, provisioning the word is more accurate. So DevOps is used everywhere. That was the concept uh, which is very important. Okay, if I uh, move further on DevOps, but before that, just a quick introduction about all these four technologies, then we'll, we'll go more focused on DevOps. But just to quick recall, microservices, containerization, CI, CD, and then DevOps. But we are focusing DevOps part today. So let's come, why we need DevOps basically. As uh, I mentioned uh, earlier that the adoption rate of DevOps is very, very high, not in technology of IT or software world, the DevOps are being extensively pulled in other fields as well. Not only the technology field, I would say the medical or the telecom and any other field you just have a mention, even industries, the production networks, the, even um, some, um, you can say online businesses and even airline businesses, because demand is very high. As I uh, showed you in earlier pictures, uh, the uh, response from Gartner and IDC, these are two giants, they have uh, predicted the same thing. And every technology is, is basically is uh, using this phenomena. So DevOps is here to stay as uh, we know it. So what basically DevOps engineer do? These are some jobs which uh, he is supposed to do starting because DevOps is more like a PM office in your company. The PM office, the project management office is uh, supposed to collaborate with different departments, with the higher ups, with the vendors, with the internal department, the operational team, the planning team, the engineering team, everyone. So DevOps is doing the same job as if they are like in a PM office. They will be monitoring, they will be <clears throat> optimizing release cycle means how fast the application is changes application could be anything as I mentioned it could be web app it could be mobile app it could be any website or anything so the process is fast by using automation uh, definitely he must know about CI CD tool he must be very good uh, with the DevOps tools like uh, containerization dockers Kubernetes and all that stuff and definitely the cloud knowledge is essential for for any DevOps guy there is nothing so what he needs to know is something like this. But there are thousands of tools available and uh, like 50, 60 tools are mentioned here. And definitely we are not going to um, tell you that every tool should be understandable, every should, should be learned. Maybe we can have at least one tool for every part of the stage and or maybe you can learn the tool which is more extensively used and more widely used. So at least I just uh, pulled on few of them for you and definitely if you're using any certain cloud provider for example I'm using Huawei cloud or any other cloud then they must have their own set of tools as well but these native tools will be uh, very important to learn if you learn any one of them like for example Docker, Kubernetes, let's say Ansible, Amazon and other so you can learn other tools as well you don't need to learn every tool by because you learn uh, some tools and then uh, you know the other part. For example, uh, we used to work on Windows 97, then we shifted to Windows 7 and Windows Me and then Windows 10 and then 11. You don't need to learn that thing. We know that with the with our previous knowledge, there are some changes in Windows 11. We are good to go. We, we learn it fast. We don't need any courses. We, need, we don't need to go to university. So if you know the some basic tools and you have good adaptability, you can learn the, uh, the additions of the tools and other things. But at least these some core technologies, for example, if I chart down few tools for you, I just highlighted few tools, or 
if I more focus, these are some native tools. You should have Linux knowledge. You should have Git knowledge. Docker and Kubernetes for the containerization, management, and creation. Ansible is all about configuration management. Jenkins is CI/CD tools. But as we are focusing more toward the Huawei cloud today, these tools will be definitely be uh, be used. But we'll be focusing on uh, Huawei tools set because which is very much extensive and very widely adopted in the world of cloud. So I'll be showing you in the lab part as well. But before that, Huawei had like multiple uh, services available, more than like 200 services could be of ECS, a simple computing resource. So we had a webinar on ECS, we had a webinar of networking, we had a webinar on applications. So again, the link will help you to understand these webinar. So focusing on the develop, uh, developer tools, the tools which are being used for by the DevOps guy, or in short, uh, Dev Cloud is the name, which is uh, you can say a set of tools which is being used to continue your DevOps journey. For example, starting with the uh, planning phase, then the coding, then the deployment deployment of your application, then testing of your code, then implementing your code, then artifacting your code, everything. Because a whole life cycle which we have discussed in the earlier stages of this webinar. So these uh, tools of Huawei are very much extensive. I use them uh, a lot and these are very much because the options they have given are very easy to understandable. They are very uh, specific. Like for example, if I do one job in one stage, the other job will be automatically created. That will help in saving my time and definitely the productivity. So Dev Cloud is in service which has multiple service in it. You can say it's a um, Dev Cloud is a framework of services. It's a bunch of uh, services. But the Dev Cloud will not work alone. Definitely, they need some ECS, a computing resource. They need some, uh, you can say, um, container engines, or maybe maybe they need SWR, which is more like a software repositories for a container. If you know about Docker images or something, so this is Dev Cloud is the central entity, and it is being communicated with the different, uh, you can say, tools. The tools could be like there are some tools I just mentioned in this slide. Project main, code hub, <clears throat> code build, code check, code test, code artifact, code pipeline, cloud deploy, sorry, code hub, cloud build, cloud check, test. You can see uh, the snapshot over here. And you can use these tool on containers as well, or also you can use these tool on ECS. ECS is nothing but a you can say a computing resource over the Huawei cloud. And uh, you just like, for example, I have a code, for example, a simple HTML file with some JavaScript and everything. So I'll be using code hub and then I'll be using code check. The code check is same like uh, if you are in the traditional world, if you see uh, the other checking software like uh, Sonar Cube or something. And then we have a code pipeline, which is more like the Jenkins Jenkins is used to build different entities to make up pipelines. And then <clears throat> we have a building uh, how to build these uh, code. Uh, for example, if I give you example of HTML code, they are easily buildable. But if my code is in Java, that needs to be built first with the use of Maven and everything. So the code build will code deploy will help code build and code deploy will help me to execute my code. And definitely Docman is 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 more like your uh, documentation purpose. So these are a few tools which are, I'll show you in the uh, console as well. Basically these all tool are same like in our common life example. Whenever we, uh, the end user give input to our customer care, the customer uh, support center, or you can see the product manager ask our developer to build some, some applications. Then they build the application developer and they put it in uh, on um, GitHub by using Git. And the Jenkins is a guy, uh, is an application which gets this code, give it to the Sonar Cube to check and give it to Maven to build that code and then deploy this code on containers or <clears throat> in Docker Hub, the image should go to Docker Hub and then with Docker Hub, the image should go to the containers and 
definitely Kubernetes is there to help you out. This is the complete life cycle of any project. And definitely Ansible is the one who is used for the configuration at every stage. Maybe it is VM or maybe it is containers. Actually, this is the complete uh, life cycle. So there are multiple people ex engaged and they are working uh, there and uh, uh, and they are just <clears throat> doing their job. So let me pause over here because I can see there are so many questions are there. Uh, maybe maybe I can answer in the end, but just to quick uh, answers if uh, they are connected with the topic. Uh, which container layer is used to? Please also the read the source? question by Shir. Okay. Yes, I'll do the uh, reading and then mm -hmm. I'll be answering. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, there are so many questions. Uh, some are related and some are uh, little far, but definitely I'll be giving answer of everyone in the end. But the question which are related to our discussion, or maybe I can. Huh, okay. 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 Uh, there are some topics like DevOps and DevSecOps. Uh, DevSecOps, basically. DevOps uh, Dev is compared to traditional DevOps. DevOps is more toward the IT world, but as you know, the more IT world is more toward. Uh, you can say toward the public to the threat of security is there. So they now started one more part, the security part. If you just noticed the last slide, which where I mentioned that what DevOps engineer should do, so there's one line security because security is there for everyone. Even for us being a human user, local user, normal user, we are very much aware about information security, data security. So DevSecOps is more like something. How do you all devs tools work together? Okay, I'll give you, Fahad, it is very good question, I must say. For example, I have a tool set at my home, which has hammer, which has plus, which has a screwdriver, and every tool has certain job to perform. I cannot use a plus to, uh, to, uh, with my nail. Maybe I can use, but the efficiency of plus would not be good as, as the hammer. And I, I cannot use hammer for, uh, for, for any net bolt. So every tool has certain job because they are bound to do. So whatever your requirement, you will use that tool. There, there is no possibility that you will be using every tool. For example, my, my application is very simple. Uh, it's very giant, but it's very simple in architecture that it will update every Monday. So I don't need much with the automation. I'll deploy that code, I'll check, and I'll just put that code in the live environment. I don't need the more CI CD things. But if my application is more toward the configurational part, then Ansible should there, or the tool which is for configuration management are there. So every tool is their unique job. Uh, achha, one question from SMBQ, I guess the name, I don't know the name of this guy, but the question is very good. The, the, it is more like a concept, although there are many matrices which needs to be measured for DevOps. But what do you think will be uh, will be the most important metrics for the cloud engineer or the devs? The, if you ask me the one line, it, it is optimizing release cycle. There are thousands of things as you mentioned, but this concept, improving or optimizing release cycle will cover most of them. For example, if I say you should do work hard, you should uh, speak truth, you should uh, do the good job, but if I would say okay, what should be the one job that everybody should do is to be speaking truth. That will cover most of the parts. So if I ask you for a DevOps or the cloud, the releasing cycle should be optimized. If re release cycle means how much deployment is is uh, optimized, will cover most of the part. If if uh, code is deployed fast, it's mean it is tested very well, it is implemented very well, it is uh, created very well. So it will cover most of it. Thank you, SMBQ, thank, good question. Achha, how to automate testing in DevOps lifecycle? The question from Fahad again. Uh, Fahad, the testing part is mostly done by the humans, but with the use of some tools. Every platform has different tools. Now, if you are focusing on the traditional one, mostly like uh, we use SonarCube for checking the software condition. Uh, definitely, it depends upon the organization. SonarCube is widely used. And if if my uh, company or my organization is on the 
uh, Huawei Cloud, then I'll be using Code Check. So Code Check has a set of rules which will analyze your code, your uh, so it will be checked. But this process should be automatic, so I will be building Cloud Pipeline. So good question. Uh, Achha, which uh, the one question from Mohor Abbas, which container layer is used in Huawei Cloud? Is it open source, Docker or CIRO? Actually, the both, uh, if I may say. Uh, because containerization or building <coughs> container is a phenomena, which is basically come from CRI. Actually, I would, would not go more into detail because it will degrade us. But definitely, if you come offline with me, I will be telling you everything. Uh, CIO is a container runtime. Infrast uh, CR means container runtime, and which was the initial one when then we moved toward the Docker for building the containers. Even in the release of Kubernetes release, latest release like 1.23, after they just skipped the Docker, and now CRI is being used. So same goes for Huawei. If you want to implement native cloud native uh, native Kubernetes, you can have CRI or Docker both of them. But if you go for the managed Kubernetes, that is a topic of our second webinar. Uh, we will be using managed Kubernetes uh, that is provided by the Huawei Cloud. So they will be having a cluster and you can run Docker and you can run CRI as well. So thank you. Uh, please highlight some benefit of using Docker container in DevOps. Achha, one question from Oni, Oniman, I guess. I'm sorry if I just pronounced the wrong one. Please highlight some benefit of using Docker containers in DevOps in cloud computing environment. Achha, let me clear you one thing but before giving the answer. Docker is a tool which makes containers. There are some other tools as well, Rocket and some other. But normally in a real world, we, we normally say Docker means containers. Okay, uh, now come to your question, some highlights. What are the benefits? When you uh, run any application in container, they are very fast, they are agile, they are uh, easily uh, created, they are uh, they can have uh, resource sharing, uh, resource availability, dynamic resource availability. So you can have details about uh, containerization and Docker. I'll be sharing the links as well. Okay, how so there's a question from Tayyab. Uh, how useful are the continuous testing process and CI CD? Okay, before giving the answer to your question, Tayyab, actually it, it's more like a debate. It's not a question because they are two school of thoughts. Every automatic automation every process every uh, you can say automatic process is being done manually first you cannot implement like for example whenever i open the laptop it will do this is this thing first you have to uh, done this task to see what are the recuperations what are the issues may i may face and then you will go for the automation so same uh, concept is being used in a testing process up now some people say that testing should be automatic there is no need because human cannot verify human this is one school of thought. The other people say that not, it should be hybrid. Okay, let me give ask you one question. And what do you think? Work from home is good or work from office is good? There are two schools of thought. Some says by in office you will have more productivity. Some says uh, the vice versa. Some says uh, let's be the hybrid. So I would personally go for the hybrid. But uh, it's a long debate. Tayyip. I hope I may answer your question. So there are so many questions from half engineer. Uh, let me read one by one and then I'll come back to my topic. Uh, what are the connections? Uh, Bashir, yeah, just a question. quick mention because we don't have a lot of time left. So we have to be very selective with the questions, okay? Um, yes, please definitely. only take the questions that are uh, related to today's topic and uh, that mm -hmm. have not been answered already but what, by what you presented because I think some of them might already be covered by the content. Yes, you are so, right. I mean, uh, we need to just uh, please choose the ones that haven't been answered yet and that are related to today's uh, topic, not uh, too general, okay? We need to stick to today's topic. Actually, I really agree with, with your point and you're absolutely right. But uh, I would be happy to answer them uh, even after the session. Sure, uh, I'm really, that's why I'm please... Really pleased to see the... Mm -hmm. Yes, I'll be picking. I, I'll picking the few of them. I just yeah, and I'll be picking a few of them. But I really uh, happy to see such such a good number of questions. Uh, 
Yes, uh, and everyone is welcome yeah. to also share the questions in the community under the webinar post. Mm -hmm. Please leave a comment with your questions mm -hmm. and uh, Bashir will be able to check them later uh, after the webinar, okay? That's a good, that's a good, that's a good, good idea. Thank you, Alina. Thank, Thank you, you as well. Thank you. Okay, so I'll be reading a few questions from Half Engineer. He has a list of questions. So I'll, I'll put a few of them. First is Cloud Artifact. Uh, basically uh, cloud ar artifact is more like uh, it's not a tool basically it's more like a helping hand for sof software development team to manage uh, software releases okay so like you can say it's a record keeping mechanism okay and then one good question is what is the difference between cloud native devops and cloud native deployment uh, i think there's a little change the question you can ask like what is cloud native role in DevOps and normal deployment of a cloud? I think you might be asking something like this. Or you, there's another question, how to implement cloud native DevOps. Basically, cloud native umbrella has the DevOps. If you want to go cloud native, you need to have do three, four things. For example, if I may ask you, what is the three building block for any computing resource? You would say, I need a monitor, I need a CPU, I need a keyboard. All other are optional, but these three should be there. I must have, maybe I change this setup to a laptop where keyboard, mouse, monitor, and CPU all are built in one part and they have mic and speaker as well. But these three are the uh, required ones. So the, the, the four things which I mentioned, microservices, CI, CD, container, and ops is there for cloud native. If you want to go cloud native, your application should be cloud native. So uh, you should have these four technologies of four tools. Definitely, if you implement these, you will be having the cloud native. So I'll be answering later about the remaining questions. So thank you for all your questions. So come back to the slides again. So these are four or five uh, uh, parts and then uh, you can say sub uh, services from the Huawei cloud, which is use, used by the DevOps engineers. Uh, first of all, when you create a project, let me go to the screen and then maybe it will be easy. But uh, before going to the screen, I'll show you one block diagram. For example, this is the requirement from my product manager. If uh, I can see, yes, you can see my picture. This is the requirement from the customer and this is the product manager. And he listed all the requirement in a project man. This is a service like I need this, I need this, I need this. And uh, send to the code management like this code uh, uh, this project man and it, which is connected with everyone in developer team and everyone and uh, <clears throat> now the teams start building their codes and they start working definitely they will be planning they will be coding and they just put their code in a code hub code hub is nothing but like a github if you if have you you have used the github uh, just to share your codes all that functionality like it will be tracking your changes it will be public it could be private anything everything you know all the co code hub is there a place where your code resides and then this code will be checked by the code check services the code check if code is checked and uh, all the issues were solved by the relevant teams then we will push our code to the build part when then code is built up now this code build part is is more like an optional. For example, if my code is in not native things like HTML, JavaScript, and CSS, they don't need to be built. If it is need any backend device like Java or other Spring Boat something, then my code should be built by using this service. My code is built, now I have an artifact, one uh, you can say uh, base software available in my code cloud artifact. And then I'll deploy that code using cloud deploy. Cloud Deploy is a service which which help me to deploy my code, my application into the real world. Maybe it's the easiest, maybe it's in containerization, depending upon my use case. And definitely deploying could be in production network, could be in the testing network, it could be in my UAT network. First I will deploy in a UAT and QA and then I'll be deploying in my production network. And definitely Cloud Test is one which, which has always been there to help you out. Maybe, um, during day one day two day day one is is the one when we are deploying your application your services day two is every day after cloud day one 
and there is one more path is there cloud pipeline which is the automatic version of all the tasks which i just mentioned you okay that's that's the good good thing we have uh, so uh, we have a question from shaya but shaya i'll be telling you this thing um, later as it is more related with the security so as i mentioned you that dev cloud is a group of tools group of services and uh, we can use all of them some of them or few of them according to our need, need list which which is my requirement i'll be using that i will not be using every tools just to fulfilling uh, my requirement maybe i i'm building a code and i'll just deploying it my code is stacked my i am not using um hub i'm just using github that's fine but i'm using these two parts that's fine if i go further <clears throat> if i go further and i'll give you a one basic if you start you just create a project because your developer your company is dealing with different projects with different customers different clients so you will make a project like project 1 project 2 in that project you will make your code repositories and then pipelines maybe pipelines if you go for the automatic one and if it is not uh, you can say automatic one you will be manually shifting every uh, part of your uh, you can say so that's a great idea okay as i mentioned you but these are some step for the lab uh, if we have time we can perform otherwise there is an option for you to check from the snapshot which i have taken uh, for you and i'll be sharing this slides uh, with you just to quick re uh, quick reference and um, revision of your all the learning which you are having right now and i'll be looking that you should review these all that thing before coming to the next part hopefully we'll be having in a month or so i'll be announcing and miss alina will be protecting on the webinar i'll be trying to do this webinar on uh, public holidays so most of the people can join and easy for me to conduct so code uh, is is reside in a code hub and then code is being checked then all comes with a ci cd pipe uh, lines code build code artifact you have the snapshot for every step i'll be showing you uh, in a while as well right now we have the questions um, Uh, we we had the answers as well and you can ask some more question and then i'll hand it over to alina for his part and and i'll meanwhile i'll be adding uh, my console parts and uh, let's see if we have time to do some uh, quick lab as well over to you alina if you want to add something um how long do you think the lab uh, would take approximately i can have in 15 minute to 15 hours whatever you say technically we should end uh, the webinar in 15 minutes so okay. not a let's, lot of let's be very fast yes but i think actually the lab is mm. a very um, interesting to most of our participants it's more um, important than the maybe uh, theoretical part so Let's um, let's go with the lab first. I think that's the yes, most I'll important. I'll be doing part. the lab, and I'll mm -hmm. be showing the process, and yeah. I'll be doing one more thing. Just come in my mind that I'll be um, making some videos of of each each one of them. Mm -hmm. But definitely, it will take time, and I'll be posting on a um, forum. Great. That will be helping them to revise, and definitely, it will be uh, as an input to the forum as well. Yes, for sure. So for sure. let. Let me share you this screen as well. Uh, let me share the screen again.
Okay, so until Bash Bashir can uh, set up the lab, uh, just a, a quick uh, few mentions. Uh, first of all, uh, if you have some uh, questions that haven't been addressed yet, uh, please post them in the community. Um, Bashir will answer your questions there. His nickname is Buzz, so you will be able to uh, see uh, his, answer, uh, his answers in the community. Also, um, at the end of this live webinar, we will be posting three questions based on today's topic. Um, if you answer the questions correctly, you can uh, win 600 high coins. And last but not least, you are also welcome to share your feedback um, in our survey. Um, you can let us know which topics you prefer. We will try, of course, to find uh, suitable uh, webinar hosts for those uh, particular topics. And um, if you think that you could also um, uh, host a webinar yourself, please contact me, let me know, and we can discuss um, about this together, okay? Um, Bas, can you hear me? Hello, Bashir, can you hear me? Um, you should know that I cannot hear you now. You are unmuted, okay? Hello? Am I audible? Yes. Yes. Am I audible? Yes. Ah, very clearly now, <laughs> actually. <laughs> it's very clear now. Achha. Achha, I don't know. Uh, actually, when I was closing windows, uh, maybe I closed that window. Um, I don't know if I'm because uh, now I joined with with the name of Baz. Yes, yes. I don't yes, know I voice is coming from Baz or Bashir. A yes, it's from the from Baz. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Let me. Okay, so that's good. This this part will be done from uh, the Baz. Let's see. Okay, so uh, so are, are you done with this slides or I'll move my part? Um, let's go to the lab. I think it's the most important. Okay, that's part. great. Okay, that's great. That's great. Okay, okay. that's great. Okay, so we are uh, right now um, available at the console, which is um, uh, the console part, or you can say the web web interface of uh, Huawei Enterprise Support Community, Huawei, Huawei Cloud. Sorry. So there are certain of tools you can find multiple uh, articles and blog of about Huawei Cloud, and we had a webinar as well. So there are some more than 200 services available, but uh, we will be focusing this part. <clears throat> the next webinar will be more focused on this part, but on this part we'll be having this part. So start with the DAF cloud and you can see all other as well cloud artifact and everything. Yes, yes, yeah, yeah, uh, your question is there as well. So uh, we are looking the services or the tools you can say that these are the tools which are being provided by Huawei cloud for the developers or the DevOps engineers. So we'll be focusing on this part. So I was allocated 15 minutes only by Miss Alina, but uh, definitely I'll be showing the videos. So this is the main page of Dev Cloud. Let's say <clears throat> if I click on Access Service, just uh, hit a message if you are. It is a screen is both screen are visible. Okay, right now I am having two projects. One is best test one, and other is another testing project. We can qu quickly create a project. Uh, by clicking on create project and then scrum i'll the write the project name as um, webinar just to show you and project code is 01 because this is the first part let me create a project okay the project mean is is the one identity and where i'll be dropping everything up right now this is the empty project it has everything just uh, just to show you the project but let me go to do some previous project so you can see the different options available let's say um this one 
Mm, actually, not this one. And let's go to the test one. What does the project means? Like every input, like it's more like your social media platform where you have uh, all your correspondence. Or if I give you a very a specific example, it's more like your Slack, which has the messages from your co-workers, your partners, your your colleagues, your coders, and everybody is, has uh, informing their solution. For example, I got one bug from user management failed manually. If I click, I, I will having all the input like this is purity is middle, severity is minor, everything. Okay, and <clears throat> sorry, and then some bugs and everything is there. You can just filter out the issues because whenever you're working on different tasks, so it's easy to collaborate by using this tool. And you can uh, see there are so many tools are there. For example, if I go to the Cloud Hub, Code Hub, sorry. You will see all the codes which are being used right now. I have two repositories in that uh, project, and which cost me like around 123 MB. So I can have two repositories. You can build directly by clicking over here, or you can build using template. For example, I use template, and I said I need to build a um, Java code. Let's say, let me find, or I can search using here let me find java okay this is java maven code uh, this is aunt and this is a simple web page from the java demo so all the details are there i'll click next and uh, i said uh, the name like web cloud any name you can you can write over here and uh, if you see the options Okay, just a second. And here you can display, this is testing project for webinar DevOps. Just like a quick idea so everybody will, will understand what is this and do you want it to be private? So only your participants or your uh, user will access definitely right now it's making private but if you want to make it private you will create users in your project right now i create a project uh, in in that product i am the only user but you can add multiple users maybe your partners your customers your uh, developers your devops engineer everybody so you can assign any task for example if you have work on devops or any other tool or like jira based tool you will get tickets and you will have to uh, make owner uh, to anyone so you can more the more the more users are there you can easily communicate with them and easily correspond without uh, using any external tool so everything is available at the, you can build your code you can deploy your code you can discuss your code you can have meeting this is casual use this one which we are using you can have every outside for any third you can integrate git and github you can integrate hub as well but you are having everything like repository which is Which is used for your repository you can make it, uh, which is uh, of java so if i click i'll i'll see the details as well definitely it's a code readme file you know all that how the codes are working there you can deploy that code a pom file and definitely a yaml file and uh, a bunch of code in a source and everything so all the code is reside in the code hub so I have a project and I, I make one repository with using code hub. So I have used two different services and all these services are under the DAF cloud 
environment now i want this code to be checked maybe the my developer my coder has make it right or right now i just pulled it from the template but just to give you an idea up now the the great thing comes here as soon as i created my project and then i make a repository and and now i come to the code check part and i don't need to create a task it is automatically created for me so definitely it is going to save my time so thanks to the cloud provider and then uh, if i click on this there are the task which is if you want to see that what is this task this task is to evaluate your code to find the bug or find the good practices right now i have not checked so it has nothing available so let's say i go back and i said please check this code maybe i can do from there as well um this was the name i guess yes and i said okay start check and there are some other uh, task are there so it is start started uh, checking my code maybe it will take some time and then it will tell you how many codes are there how many errors are there and i'll be checking these issues without uh, wasting further time i'll be showing you some other for example if i open this task which was failed because there were 24 issues on and only one issue was solved so there were 24 issues 23 were unsolved it means only one issue was solved so what are these issues what are the concerns maybe because they are checking as per the rule maybe some uh, some are not issue now some are not bugs they are according to your need maybe some uh, file name are duplicates some blocks are because they are checking as per the standard but that is depending upon your use case on your customer interaction the same thing which is used in on prem world is by sonar cube and there are some other tools as well but sonar cube is uh, the one which is widely used so if you see there are 24 issues and like empty block should should be removed and not only it is giving you about the code it is also suggesting you what you should do and how to how your code should be improved maybe these are not the uh, issues which are normally uh you can say uh bugs they are more um like a uh, concerns or information are there. Uh, just one quick question from mr shahriar i guess how do you manage security and access control in dev cloud first of all if i am building a project i'll be not allowing anyone to be a part of that project until unless i'll give uh, the access to them the access could be uh giving by adding their name or maybe giving uh, by sharing their link um if we go to the product a uh, project and then um add the users so only the authenticated users are like i have 100 developers in my team i'll be giving access to only 25 which are working on that project i will not be the one thing which is for the security is the least uh, least access you can give only required access you should give if for example 25 people are working on that product only 25 percent should be authenticated so this is how security is being managed and definitely for when you are pushing the code you will be sharing uh, ssh keys so only the dedicated and the specific person from their laptop will be able to code uh, share the code no no one else uh, will able to which is the same phenomena which is which we are using in our get or any other platform in jenkins or something so my code is being checked and meanwhile i'll show you the another code uh, the red one is major the brown one is critical and the minor so you can solve and for example i said uh, let's say this is empty block and i said no this is fine this is not the issue and i said uh, this issue is no, no more uh, problematic so i can uh, remove this and uh, i say that this this issue is solved and then my count will be less than uh, with the initial okay so now uh, code check is there now what i can do i can build a pipeline or and i can do manually building so i'll go for the manual so i can use every tool one by one meanwhile miss alina i'm just you just uh, you can just confirm me when to end. I'll be trying to finish uh, in a minute or two, it's whenever it, you see. It's okay. perfect in a few minutes if we can end it. Okay, that's great. Okay, now you see my code was tested. And uh, if I come to the cloud build, now I can see my web demo cloud build is there. Okay, the name is same, but definitely the project is different. So there is no problem. Uh, no problem. So I can click over here or I can run. 
to build my code because you know this is my java code and i need it to be built in the uh war format so my java code can be implemented into any uh, application and then i'll be able to access that code so all the details are there for uh, where do you who want to do this this is the user i'm doing it manually i'm not using pipeline which branch i should use the master branch normally i'm using right now if i open this it will show you all the details and this is the build id it is same if you know about jenkins every build has a certain id this is the id every time i build this code for any changes you will have um, the response and this is the code if uh, web link for my code okay now my code is built i can see the green tick it's been it is built and it is uh, okay to share let me open and i'll see the responses and now you can see uh, something the code is built using maven maven is a tool which is used for building my code up definitely it is showing in chinese so you can convert it in english by simply using the translate into english method the first code is check it would take 2 second then maven build it build the code using maven and all the logs are there if you want like if any issue you can just troubleshoot over here so my code is built my code is check my code is available one thing i can see in cloud artifact my code is should available there or maybe uh, i can use in a later stages i can see three repositories are there you can go to release app your webinar is the repository name and my code is there and you can see the time uh, is available on the 3rd march so these are different tools which are i'm using now i can go to deploy so my code can be deployed okay i have uh, available right now i don't so deployment is the most versatile part it is depending upon your need right now i don't have any uh, machines or vcs or vms are running so i'm giving you the the topics so maybe i'll make a video for you and then it will help you but i'll tell you everything about the steps so you can follow first of all i know this is the my java file so i need jump jdk i can use any version uh, up now which version is should be used it is the one which is being told you by the uh, your developer for example if i go to the code code hub and i saw one readme file there that should tell me everything about my code and everything for example yes you can say he said use jdk 8 open jdk is fine maven uh, version should be 3.3 being being a devops engineer i don't know about the developer part but my developer has everything written for me over here so that's fine okay uske baad then the step which is normally used to build all that applications and uh, if i come back to this window so i said okay jdk is fine but uh, he said jdk okay i i will be using 1.8 which is a requirement and then i said Uh, deployment source do you want software package or the build task we had build task available so we should use the build task what is the build task i uh, see i can only have one build task because i have run only once so the build task is available now he said what is the download path where is this available normally it is uh, if it, if your machine is linux based normally it is available over here or if you have windows machine it is available here so i can put my xyz whatever the path i have follow right now i don't have any path i just write this and then the service which is a spring boot which is used to um, deploy my application so i can give input for these as well and in the last i will have a health check and uh, so my application will be built on my ecs machine or my container machine and then Uh, what happened i can access using the public ip of that machine with the port number right, right now port number is for example i think we have given port number 8080 uh, whatever the port number we have given let's say 8080 so we can build uh, save, save and deploy and then definitely uh, yeah, here service port like for example i want it should be 801 and so definitely i need to enable this on ecs as well uh, 
wherever I want to build. And then I click OK and then my code will be deployed and all that process is being done manually. But if I want this process should be automatic, then I'll be using pipeline option. Pipeline is a service which connects all the part, parts like code hub, code test, cloud build, cloud deploy, everything and one by one and it will deploy like this. For example, if I open any previous task and open any any commit, the, he will take the code and then build it, check it and deploy it and definitely give you the output. All that process will be uh, automatic. So it's in a quick introduction of uh, every DevOps tool, what is DevOps, what is cloud native, and uh, how things are used. And one thing I uh, would uh, need to add here specifically for my participants, because thank you for your input. Your inputs are very valuable. The questions are there. But there are some difference in webinar, the trainings, and uh, you can say um, any um, video or something. And every uh, each of three has different audience different tasks to follow different you can say outputs webinar is for for the large number of audience to get the input about everything and uh, so you can build up training is to build uh, end to end product you can say boot camp something like that and then videos are for your help so i'll be trying to help you with the videos as well so you can perform their task and build your applications and using all that tools same we we follow in the previous webinars because webinar has has a allocated time and we need to focus <clears throat> on different topics i tried to cover most of the to topics although it, it was uh, only for one, one hour and a half one and a half hour but uh, as alina so uh, know already that whenever i start it takes like two or two hours or more so i tried to cover as much as, as possible so now you have bunch of information available you can implement it you can review the task you can come up with the question on the post and you can even directly contact me on the forum or maybe over linkedin uh, with uh, whatever uh, you have learned whatever your uh, understandings are maybe you can come with a question and definitely a uh, shoot out at post uh, in form of post or over the LinkedIn would be very helpful. So uh, people from uh, other part of the world will also join the second second part, which is more toward the communities. And I'll try to break uh, into two parts because what I see today that you are more uh, 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 very much understandable and more agile in nature so maybe we need two parts for the communities so you can share your suggestions and uh, ideas maybe to me to miss alina maybe to in in a dm or in form of any message so uh, we'll be planning the third second and third part so we'll try to distribute communities in two parts so i guess this will be more efficient maybe you can find more data um, on internet I have some boot camps and trainings as well. So you can find some are available free as well. So you can have a look at this. So over to you, Miss Alina. I, I can stop sharing if you want. And uh, maybe if you want the slides, so I can show you for that as well. I just want mm -hmm. to, um, before we end, I just want to quickly present the three questions. And mention yes. again that uh, you have prepared three questions based on today's topic. Um, everyone is welcome to go to the webinar post and answer them uh, in the community uh, for a chance to win some high coins. So if you want to get the rewards, you need to answer the three questions correctly, okay? This is the uh, rule we have. Um, everyone who's paid attention to the webinar will be able to answer them, I think, uh, easily. I shared the link again. Um, for those of you who uh, are not familiar with us, please know that we are the Huawei support community. We are the official technical community dedicated to Huawei enterprise product solutions and certifications. We have a big community already, but uh, you are welcome to join us and even invite other colleagues and friends if you think that they will uh, appreciate our content. Uh, please know that we have an extensive knowledge base that you can learn from. We have technical magazines, technical collections that you can learn from and that will uh, help you prepare for different Huawei certifications. 
Uh, we also have a public recognition system and rewards. Uh, for example, uh, Bashir is one of our elite users. He has uh, different elite user roles in the community. Um, and we also have monthly webinars like this one and also uh, multiple activities that you can join to get different rewards. Uh, and that being said, um, will you please, Bashir, um, present the three questions? I will also upload them in the webinar post uh, after we end the session. Uh, but first, I would like you to present them here in the live uh, meeting and then I will uh, update the post as well. Okay. That's great. Okay, okay. so three questions are very much uh, easy if you have taken this webinar and I hope you were very uh, concentrated and very much active. So the first question is simple, true, false. DevOps is all about getting everyone in organization, especially development and IT operations to pull in the same direction by. Is it a true or a false? Do not try to answer over here. Definitely you will be posting your answer in a forum. So uh, the privacy should be maintained. Second question is, uh, you can say uh, like Flynn Black, Dash empowers organizations to build and run a scalable application in modern dynamic environments such as public, private and hybrid clouds, be it cloud native technology, be it cloud native function, the Huawei cloud or all the above. The third question is very good. It's a multiple uh, answers question. DevOps cloud consists of some of the following services, some of the, not all. So you may pick one, two, three, four, five, or even all of them. Code Hub, Cloud Function, Cloud Build, Track Test, Artifact, OnePlus, or Cloud Deploy. So you can pick one, two, three, four, whatever you feel easy with. So these are three questions, Ms. Alina, and yes. I hope um, they are comfortable with answering um, on a forum. Yes, they are now so. available in the forum as well. You are welcome to answer them. Uh, replies are hidden because it's fair to uh, keep the privacy of your answers. Um, I welcome everyone to uh, answer the three questions. And also, if you have some leftover questions uh, for um, our host today, please share them uh, in the same place in the comment section of the webinar post. And uh, Buzz, as you can find Bashir in the community, will be able to uh, check your questions later and answer them one by one. Uh, just please make sure that the questions are related to uh, today's topic. And also please note that the three best questions will be selected for rewards as well um, as a thank you for uh, bringing value to our uh, webinars. So uh, I would like to thank Bashir again. Welcome back as a webinar host. Thanks everyone for attending and please stay tuned for the um, uh, following uh, webinars that uh, belong to the same series presented by um, Bashir. And um, I also welcome you to subscribe to our uh, webinar collections if you want to see uh, our previous webinars. Today's um, recording uh, will also be uploaded in the webinar post. So if you want to watch it again uh, later, uh, please know that it will be available uh, in the same uh, link that I shared uh, multiple times today. You can find it in the chat. Um, and uh, oh, yeah. please, please. Actually, one thing I would like to add. Uh, thank you, Ms. Alina, first of all. Thank you for the appreciation and the kind words. But one uh, one question, or maybe you can say suggestion from SMBQ. Since this is the first part of a series, what do you recommend that participants should read on before coming to the next session? So it could be more interactive and could move into the further details. That is very good uh, suggestion, a question. Thank you, Mr. Uh, whoever you are. Uh, like we have DevOps tools uh, today. so. In the next part, we will be learning the Kubernetes. So the knowledge of container should be there and the basic knowledge of Linux should be there so we can more focus on um, the Kubernetes part. So because webinar is is like more open-ended because we have different people from different part of uh, world, different background, different experiences. So we try to cover everyone in a suitable way. So some questions were, uh, were the beginner level, some are intermediate and some are on the higher levels and uh, some are from the security domains as well so but I'll try to answer most of them so better is to get a few knowledge about Kubernetes and containerization if you are if you want to look about details you can find me details um, in my 
profile at uh, uh, Huawei Enterprise Support Community, and uh, I can share you a link as well. Okay, I have few links available for you. You can easily copy, uh, and then session can be handed. So here are some links for you. If you see, uh, first link is our last previous webinar. That is uh, more about uh, cloud native approach and elastic cloud uh, server ECS servers. Then article about uh, microservicing, article about DevOps, and how to build ECS on a Huawei cloud. It is a step by step uh, procedure available, so you can easily uh, find yourself. Uh, and two more blogs I will uh, like to share. One is about seven elements of cloud native computing, and uh, do you think this AI tool will uh, uh, destroy our job? This is one article which I had written recently, and which is the one of the uh, widely asked question to me. So you can have uh, this as well, and definitely you can follow me on LinkedIn and uh, on Huawei platform. The link was shared by Miss Alina. So that is all from my side, and we'll try to arrange this session, a uh, next part in. In a public holiday, as I mentioned earlier as well. So we'll discuss with Alina, and I'll be sharing the detail, and she'll be updating on the forum for you. So thank you, everyone. I would like uh, to thanks uh, everyone personally, and uh, of course to uh, with Miss Alina because she arranged all that stuff and provided that platform to me. So again, thank you. So you are uh, open to ask uh, and share your feedback, as she mentioned earlier. Thank you, Mar. Thank you, thank you as well. Thank, uh, thank you, and thanks everyone who participated today. Um, and we will uh, uh, continue this in the community as always. So, if you have more questions for us, please uh, share them in the community. And also, I invite you to answer the three questions to get uh, the rewards I mentioned. So, thanks, uh, thanks again. Have a great day or evening ahead, uh, depending on where you are from. And um, see you soon. Thanks, everyone.